Hiya, I'm Penny, aka Lady Phoenix, um, and this is my introduction video to what I hope is going to become a really great series. Um, so, first of all, uh, I think it's fair to answer the question, why do I paint? Um, painting for me is the primary goal. So I've just dropped the pen. Um, Yeah, painting is the primary goal for me. Um, I came back into Warhammer Fantasy Battle because I wanted to paint great little miniatures. Um, I wanted to learn more techniques. Um, I wanted to be as good as I possibly could. Um, however, in the last month that I've been back, um, I've played a few small games. Never played a game from start to finish. Um, but I've, I want to play more, I want to join tournaments, um, I don't mind losing, um, I know some of you go, oh, it's really bad to be hammered every single tournament, um, it, it has its educational values, um, if you lose in a tournament, you learn how you lost, um, you get on with it, you, you get better. Um, but painting is my primary goal. Um, I was painting Chaos figures 14 years ago, 13, 14 years ago. And um, what I found back then, I wasn't so much of a good painter then. Um, so I did Warriors because I could paint them black, then paint corn red over the top, um, dry brush the hell out of it and uh, just build up the colours, which is actually what I'm still doing primarily, um, but I have learned that there's new techniques, uh, new for me anyway, um, techniques that you need to learn to, to, you can't always dry brush everything, for example, tiny areas. Um, just from watching a few techniques, um, I probably become 10 times the painter that I, that I was. Um, so, yeah, after taking a break from Warhammer, um, I came back to painting, but in the form of model aircraft, which I still love to do. Um, however, they're very big and bulky, and you can't do much with them, maybe possibly with the exception of hanging from the ceiling. Um, so I came back last month. Um, I bought the Island of Blood box set, a um, little bit scared of it at first because the high elves, I've always seen those as you've got to paint them neat and tidy or you might as well not bother at all. Same with the Bretonians. Um, so you've got, high, you've got an army of high elves in the box um, and then to fall back on you've got a box full of um, Skaven which can be done quite scruffy. In fact, I think if you did Skaven nice and neat that probably wouldn't look so good. However, um, got into it, enjoying the High Elves. Um, so High Elf is now my chosen army. Um, so what I'd like to do is make a series of videos. Um, it's very easy to look at the hobby and go, oh, I can never achieve that. Um, I'll show you my first almost completed model. When I looked at that, I thought, I can't do that. That's far too complex. Um, however, it's part of the Skaven army, which I don't want. Um, I kind of tackled it with the attitude that um, I'm going to get a close in on the arm there. Um, I'm really quite proud of that. Unfortunately, the camera's not very good quality. Um, yeah, I, t I tackled that with the attitude that if it all came out wrong, I could just either strip the paint, start again, or just not bother with it. Um, however, I've watched a few YouTube videos, I've learned a few techniques, I've, I've got jumped in, um, and I've done it. Excuse the coffee mug, I am a Wiccan Wanderer supporter, I don't care who knows. Um, and we might go up this season. We'll come down again next season, but we might go up this season. 
that's all that matters. So, why am I making these videos? Right, there's quite a lot of videos out there from people who are quite frankly brilliant. And although they are demonstrating simple techniques and they are making them look very, very simple, the fact remains that they are fantastic painters. If you look at the painter before you look at what they're doing, it's very easy to say, oh my God, I can never achieve that. Um, if you look at their level of standard, um, you look at the mistakes that they make, um, and you look at things from a beginner's point of view, um, I'd like to sort of try to change things so that people go, I think I can achieve that. It's worth giving it a go. Um, so that's the aim of my series. Um, I'm probably not going to bring anything new to the table because just about everything I've done before, or everything I'm going to do has been done before. Um, and there are some fantastic videos being made out there. Um, Probably the three most influential for me, in no particular order. First of all is a chap he called uh, By Painted, who does a lot of airbrush work, and he is absolutely amazing. Um, he does make it look simple, and because I've airbrushed before, it is a lot harder than he makes it look. But again, it's worth having a go. If you, if you look up... Um, how to paint a flame sphere phoenix which he does in two parts he whips it off so quickly but he makes it look so easy um, another one that I like complete opposite end of the scale is a lady called girl painted um, now she she I think I believe she's a general painter um, she she seems to be just into the into the painting and the different techniques um, she's a fantastic brush painter um, so if you want to learn any brush techniques the hers are the videos you want to look up um, and although I'm not a painter of 40k um, it's still worth watching her videos because the techniques that she brings are brilliant I, I have a slightly different style um, from her. She seems to be nice doing the nice layers. Uh, I'm not so much of a layer painter. I'm more of a dry brush painter. Um, it works for me. It costs me a fortune in brushes. Um, but I think the results are great. I'll show you this one that's, that's unfinished. Um, as you can see, there's no layers on there. All I've done, ex again, excuse the poor, um, the poor quality camera. Um, a really good place to look is on his bottom. You can see it's that's not layers; it's just dry brush. Um, it takes a little bit longer, um, but it enables you to just if you dry brush with watered down paints. You have to go over and over and over, but you do just get to build the layer up gradually. Um, and it has a similar effect of a really carefully air painted, uh, airbrushed. But that's my style. Um, to be honest with you, I think if I hadn't already had a YouTube channel, I'd probably be calling myself Mrs. It, Mrs. Drybrush or Miss Drybrush because I'm not married. Um, right, so. Um, the aim of this series, as I say, is to give beginners tutorials to beginners by a beginner. Um, sorry, it's a bit of a mouthful. Again, I know these have all been done before, um, but a lot of the things that I have planned, I think won't kill to have another one if there's two or three people doing a subject and then somebody else does the same thing um, it just gives you a slightly different perspective and I think that works really well um, I go to different places I go into uh, my local GW store 
um, I go to a local gaming works, uh, war, war game club. Um, I go to a couple of other places, and every time I'm there, someone comes up to me and they say, "Oh, try doing this, that, or the other." And quite often, they may actually um, give me a technique that I've already been told by somebody else, but they've just explained it slightly differently, and I'm like. Hmm, I never really thought of that one. Yeah, lovely. Um, using the wrong colours to achieve the correct effect, for example. Um, pretty hard to explain in, in one sentence, but um, you, you Games Workshop do set lists, which on the whole are brilliant. Um, but sometimes you need to adapt those set lists. Um, and it's just having an understanding of the colours. When you've been painting for many, 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 many years, you will know all of the colours off by heart. And I know this because when I when I painted before, 14 odd years ago, I knew the colours off by heart, and I knew I knew all the old names. This is why the new the new names have confused me now. Um, I've been painting back now yeah, about a month. Certain colours I know, Lead Belcher, I know. Um, Agrax Earthshade, like Reekland Flesh Shade, um, Corn Red, Black, yeah, uh, White. The colours that you use more often, you you get to know. Um, so I want to, as I as I do things, I want to create beginning videos. So one of my first videos is going to be probably overdone. Um, do's and don'ts with paint brushes. How to paint, um, how not to paint, which is just important, isn't how to paint. Um, what what preparation you need. Um, sorry, I've just done something that I know a lot of people find annoying, and that's I've licked my paintbrush. Um, I do not subscribe to the theory of not licking paintbrushes. I just think it's just moistens it slightly, but don't ever lick your tooth. Uh, don't ever lick your brush when you've got a mouth full of something sticky or garlic or something. So, yeah. So basically, beginner guides for beginners by beginners um, is my general aim. Um, another thing I plan to do is obviously I've got the Island of Blood box set which I've already begun to paint, um, which I'm actually having a lot of fun with. Um, <coughs> starting with all the models that I've not painted, and then any future ones that I purchase, I actually plan to um, to make videos on. Um, so each video that I, each unit that I paint, um, I will do from start to finish, from the unboxing, so at the start of the video, I will have a box of Sisters of Amazon. And then it'll be nice and cellophane, and I'll take the cellophane off, and I'll look at it, I'll look at the instructions, I'll look at the sprues, I'll cut everything off the sprues. Um, if there's any new techniques that I've not covered before, um, then I will obviously make an instructional video on that, and I will start off perhaps with... Um, how to clean sprues, um, if you choose to clean, how to cut off sprues, how to tidy them up, and then obviously I'll paint it, and then I will I'll do like a kit review, how much did I enjoy painting that model, um, probably, now I will state at this point, everything that I say is my own opinion, um, and my opinions do differ from everybody else. Um, as I suspect a lot of people do, I do enjoy uh, doing the large models, um, big, massive, single, single models. That being said, I'm in the middle of doing uh, 40 clan rats. Here we are, there's three of them. And I'm actually having a lot of fun with these, and possibly because I'm doing them different colours. You see you've got a blue one there. Um, what's this one? This one's a red one. Um, so they're, they're good fun, um, and I'll basically I'll go through and I'll say, yeah, this was a fun kit. Um, another plan that I have is Enemy of the Month. Um, 
where I will I aim to complete once a month uh, be it a single figure or a unit or a large monster uh, one unit or one one thing from an enemy per week uh, sorry per month and again I'll do that same way as I will with my own units <coughs> we'll start off with the box we'll open the box we'll have a look we'll go through we'll assemble we'll paint and I'll tell you what I thought about it um, I'll look at his stats on on the bat on the battleground um, I'll look at any special special features that he may have additional weapon spells um, and just go through him and probably I'll do that I'll review that on a on a two thumbs up or two thumbs down basis was it a good kit or not am I scared of him on the battlefield or not um, and then I will make other videos that will just cover things um, new releases that may come out that are relevant to me I shan't bother so much with 40k um, that being said I'm not ever ruling out uh, not being involved in 40k um, I just don't think right now it will interest me I heard someone say that they're saying that they may have a cheap um, cheap set of 40k that they might let me have for extremely cheap um, I don't know much about 40k but apparently what they've got is they've got the new edition that's come out whenever it came out and they've still got an unopened box set from the previous release which is just floating around doing nothing um, so I may pick that up really cheap purely as something to paint and who knows um, I picked up Warhammer Fantasy Battle purely for something to paint and here I am making a video planning tournaments joining clubs um, looking for games to play so 40k I'm not going to rule out 40k going the same way um, however as it stands right now I plan to talk about fantasy um, news that comes out um, I'd like to also get involved with the community more um, so perhaps uh, I could get hold of other other gamers um, perhaps have a little Skype chat or something um, sorry I'm, I'm I do two things at once um, and I noticed that I spilt some paint on my table earlier on so I do have to clean it now I'm, I'm sorry that's the way I am um, so yeah maybe I can get hold of other gamers and we can have a little chat um, find out how their views are similar or different to mine um, do they hate games workshop do they love games workshop do they have the same viewpoint as me um, and yeah just just go from there um, and obviously any any products that we can we can get hold of um, I'll try to review them um, I'll either buy products and review them or Hint, hint, if you're a manufacturer or a retailer and you want to send me a product that you think I can use, you want me to test it out, then uh, I will certainly give you my honest opinion. I will warn you though, if I don't like it, I will state that I don't like it. Um, simple as that. So, Warhammer Fantasy Battle. Um, first question I hear thrown about all over the place is oh it's far too expensive um, it is and it isn't in my opinion um, I bought Island Blood 60, 60 odd pots of paint um, and things to put figures in I bought an extra figure off eBay I have bought boxes um, and I've probably spent as a rough average £400 this month on Warhammer however um, once this little lot is painted up I don't need to buy any more paints um, and let's let's be fair for £61 I've got a hell of a lot of figures which have taken me a while to paint um, now once they're all painted up, I mean I, I happen to be doing a nice little deal with someone on a forum 
um, I'm going to be getting the High Elf Battalion minus the uh, Chariot. So that's a, a unit of archers, a unit of spearmen, um, Silver Helms. Then he's going to throw in another unit of Sea Guard and uh, the Island of Blood Prince on a Griffin. So that's five units. Um, and all he wants in exchange is a box of uh, is Sisters of Avalon. So basically I'm getting eight, about 70, 80 quid's worth of figures for 30 quid. Which will probably keep me going for another month or so. Um, of course I can make some nice little videos on that one. Um, now once they're gone, then... I mean, as I say, at the moment, I'm, I'm actually quite poor. I have about £20 a month, uh, £20 a week to spend on Warhammer. Um, and I'm spending most of that, if not all, on paints. Um, but the paint, I've got the paints now. Um, there's very, very few paints that I actually need. Um, so whereas I'm spending all, whilst I'm spending all my money on paints, I'm probably now going to buy like one pot of paint a month maybe a new paint or maybe one to replace an empty pot um, and then I can have more money left over for, for figures if I haven't got a lot of money left over then I'll perhaps buy a single character figure um, if I've got a lot of money left over oh, yeah I've got a lot of money left over I'll probably buy a big unit so um, is it expensive I personally don't think so um, I think if you put a price on the quality of figures they do quite well and even even the paints um, I'm gonna do a very very poor uh, comparison um, here we have I think these actually are the same color right in this hand I've got uh, Celestra Grey Citadel base is a base color £2.40 a pot for 12 mils, which is 20 pence per mil. On this hand, we have a bottle of model air, pale blue, pale blue grey. Might be the same colour. I've got a feeling it is. Um, they certainly look similar. Um, now this is about £2, about £2.40 actually. I'm sure it's £2 plus VAT from where I get it from. Um, the price you pay will depend on the shop you go to, um, but you get 17 millilitres. Um, now this, this you can't see it, um, but it's very, very, let me get a piece of tissue paper. Right, this is the Celestra Grey. As you can see, it's very thick and very gloopy. And what you do with that is you would get a blob into your palette. You would mix a bit of water in. Um, and I would go not far off um, equal measures of water and paint. Um, if I was going to put that through an airbrush, you probably put about four parts water and one part paint. Or some kind of medium. It doesn't have to be water. Now this... This is very, very runny. As you can see, look at that. It's very, very runny. It's actually ready for an airbrush. So, if you were using this for an airbrush and you mixed it down, you can turn that from 12 mil of paint into 48 mil of paint um, and this is 17 mil so you've effectively got 2 pound 40 for 48 mils of paint 2 pound 40 for 17 mils of paint so on that basis alone is this expensive no obviously once you get into things like model color model color is a lot lot thicker and you cannot put that through an airbrush it's got a similar consistency this is a similar consistency to one of the layer paints for Citadel. So these are both going to be roughly the same price. Um, 
maybe a little bit cheaper for the model color for the fact that you can you get a little bit more for your money um, and also the model color range there's a much wider range um, if you're like me and you don't understand the colors I go for these because there's a lot of help and advice available you go into a games workshop store and say what colors do I want for this that and the other um, and I've had GW staff say to me even though it says use that color in the set list don't buy that color instead get this or they've said oh you said you've got such and such to paint okay well don't get the color why didn't you get that one you can use it for both um, once you start to understand colors then well, then it's up to you um, you can buy the model color range or there's, there's other products available um, excuse me I'm going to have to put this away and be anal about the way I put my paints away um, because I can't find my paints so easily in a big mass um, I actually have labels on them and they've got the letters on so I know what order to put them in um, so and I suppose the bottom line with the question is it expensive is it can't be too expensive for you because you're playing it if it's too expensive you wouldn't take part um, and besides there's other miniatures out there I believe it's Mantic Games um, I hope to do some reviews on those at some point <laughs> um, I've heard mixed reviews about them I've heard they're fantastic figures they're cheap figures uh, they're nasty figures there's no detail in them they just don't work or brilliant um, I think the best thing for me to do is to go out and buy some paint them and have a look at them. Can I incorporate them? If not, I won't use them again. So, um, that brings me to my last subject that I want to cover today, which is what do you need for painting? Um, first thing I'm going to cover is what you don't need for painting. Um, first one is money as I've just explained um, I'm on a very low budget um, I know there's people out there that have even less budget than me um, but I think for the cost of the figures and the paints etc etc 20 pounds a week isn't an awful lot and yet I get by on it um, sometimes I go over a little bit sometimes I spend a bit less uh, sometimes I buy alternative products there's my primers, Vallejo 73603 and Vallejo 73600 white and black. Um, so I'm not using exclusive Games Workshop products. You've got to go the best you can. And to be honest with you, I think they are better anyway. Um, so I spend what I have to spend. Um, I would probably, in all fairness, if I came to the end of this this box set I've got everything nicely painted up and I just can't afford the next load of figures um, I'd probably just scrape 61 pounds together and just buy another island of blood um, it will give me duplicate characters and, and, and lords and things that I, I don't need um, but it will give me uh, some character, some rank and file um, Reavers, for example, you can't buy them on their own. So you either have to get them on eBay or you have to buy another Island of Blood set. Um, Swordmasters, unit Swordmasters, unit of Reavers, um, and a unit of Seaguard for £61. And then you end up with a Griffin and a whole Skaven army and another Wizard. Um, you can't really argue with that can you so there you go is it too expensive so money YouTube or internet that's another thing you don't have to have but it helps um, I learned an awful lot on YouTube um, I've, I've looked out for a lot of people or not looked out for them but I've come across people um, and forums forums are very very good but you don't need them um, another thing you don't need but are advantageous are clubs uh, Wargang clubs I went along to the Kings Lynn RPG and Wargang club last Sunday it was my first week there 
um, I was made to feel extremely welcome. Um, I went down there to paint. And the reason I went down to paint was rather than actually painting my own house. Saturday I was painting in the games workshop store. Um, and I was in the corner, I was doing my own little thing. Um, but all around me games and conversations were going on. And I could hear all the conversations and I'm, I'm paint, 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 paint. Um, but taking it all in. So that's why I wanted to go down to the War Game Club in Kings Lynn. Um, and also to try and link up with people who might play. Um, I've got to say I was slightly disappointed at first because 75% of people were playing Magic the Gathering, um, which I don't get. To me, it's just a card game and a collector's card game, but that's fine. Um, I know there's people out there going, Warhammer Fantasy Battle, what's the point in that? Be better off playing 40k. Um, and there were some people playing X-Wing, which kind of looks exciting, but um, I'll give that a try another day. Um, so yeah, I was the only one, I was the only one who was, seemed to, admittedly into fantasy, and the only one who was doing any painting. Um, however, I sat there doing my own thing, I'm listening to things, this is how I've got into X-Wing, by listening to people doing the X-Wing, and this lovely chap came up to me, and he says, oh, is this talking about this, you see, I think I took up my I've shown you, it was 31 minutes ago, I was doing some work on this, now I got this on eBay for tenner, so I really couldn't not buy it, it's 10 quid, you've got to have it. So I was doing a little bit of work on him and he came up to me and he says, and a lot I've had this a lot of times, oh is that the old blood test? I went, yeah it is. And he's gone, oh I'm really loving the way you're doing dry brushing. He says, I just can't do it. So for the first time in my life I've actually had a chance to show someone how to do a bit of shading and how to do highlighting and a little bit of dry brushing. And we got talking, <coughs> excuse me, and he said, he does actually play fantasy, but he's too scared to go down places like GW um, because he's too scared to get hiding and get humiliated and, you know, doesn't, basically thinks it's embarrassing to lose all the time. And I said, well, that sounds like you want to be playing me then because I'm not particularly good at it. So he said that he's going to bring his army down to the club one day and we're going to have a game. Um, hopefully that will be um, what's now going to become tomorrow um, but it's great news for me because I can actually play a game against someone I don't really know um, I've, uh, to be honest with you the only people I've ever played against is the uh, store manager in Sheffield GW who's probably not working there anymore and my old housemate who used to play dwarves so it always used to be chaos versus dwarves or chaos versus orcs and goblins and that was all I ever played um, so I don't know what he plays but that's that's what he plays so yeah clubs they help but they you're not need, they're not needed um, another one is airbrushes um, I find I think there's a big debate about the airbrushes um, there's my basic airbrush, cost me £20 and the compressor cost about £10. It's nothing special. Um, airbrushing, apparently in tournaments uh, and painting competitions, you get marked down for airbrushing. Um, that's fine. Um, you yeah, have to find a balance. Uh, I mean, I, I airbrush, as you can see, probably tell from this that's airbrush primer um, I just think they just best because that that primer that I use it's so it's so user friendly um, if I spray too much primer on it just doesn't still obscure details it's just brilliant um, but I would love to learn how to, how to paint with an airbrush as an as an as a base and layer um, but you don't need them. Um, I can achieve great results with a brush. Um, and I know girl painting will as well because she is brilliant with a brush. 
Um, the last thing you don't need is space. Um, I'm just going to pull this down a bit. Oops. That's how not to do it. What you can see there is my entire workspace for painting. I have to take that off. Now I have my workspace. Um, I have beside me, I have a cutting mat. Um, and I literally have um, this much by this much. And I've bought some shelves. And I've got all my paints. And I've got to keep my paints in my toolbox. Um, but actual working space, I have about about that much, and and that's just enough space. I put a little piece of paper down, and I put my pots of paints down, and I put a few brushes down, I put a few models that I want to paint. Um, on one of my drawers, I can't show you because I can't move the computer around, but I have little those little plastic coat hooks, and you'll see. I put all of my models on onto bull. These are these are small bulldog clips. You can see from the size of my finger, they're not very big. And what I do is I clip clip the bulldog clip onto there, and then when I finish painting it, it hangs on on the clip on on the on the hook. And I've got twelve hooks. Um, and I I because I was told ten to fifteen at a time is, is is a is a maximum um, I've got at the moment I say I'm doing doing the clan rats I've got 40 clan rats to do so what I do is I just pick up three of them put them down and then I take the one closest to the left which is now fourth from the last left I paint him and I put him right on the end and you'll find they all move along and then I pick up these three um, and then because I'm doing them all slightly differently, some will get finished quicker than others. And so when, when one is finished, he'll be replaced with another one. So I've always got 12 on the go. Uh, some will be painted, some will be unpainted. Um, it's just a case of using what little space you've got. Um, I've got stack up drawers. Um, I bought some of these as shop called Home Bargains. And these actually come in sets of four for a pound. And I bought three sets. And I've pulled one set in half and I've made them into two sets of six. So they go on to one of my shelves. A um, little spare box for just for little bits and bobs. Um, this is actually a milk bottle cap, which I cut the uh, thread out of. Very, very good for mixing paints because you put your paint in, you mix it. You can then push it and then it drips into your airbrush um, if you spray paint a certain colour. Um, don't really use them for Warhammer very much, but I've got these. I forget who makes them, but these are my little magic clamps. I don't know how they work, but they just, they do. Um, okay, that didn't work. But you normally use, usually use them in pairs. Um, so yeah, so it's making use of space. Um, so long as you've got enough space to do that, you generally you've got enough room to paint. Um, although I paint like that, and I paint like that, and I paint like that, and I paint like that, um, as per needed. So space. So let me tell you what I think you do need for painting. First and foremost, the very most important thing is you've got to have the attitude for painting. Um, you've got to paint because you enjoy painting. Um, for me, the job that I do and the life I lead can at times be stressful, as I suspect most of you is, is, are in that situation. Um, we do work because we, we work to live, not live to work. And sometimes we, we, we come home with the stresses of the day. For me, I come down and I pick up a paintbrush and I get on with that. If at any point st uh, painting stresses me out, then that's the complete opposite of what I was aiming for. So I can't do it. Um, very, very similar, but also very different is 
you've got to have the mood for it. Um, so I'm in a situation where I enjoy painting. I've identified that paint is is a stress reliever for me. Um, but if I'm just not in the mood to paint, there's no point painting. Um, I watched um, I watched a very very well, I watched a lot of videos by her, but um, Joey Berry, absolutely brilliant, absolutely love her videos. She has so much energy. And I don't know where she gets it from, but she made an excellent video about um, how to get your motivation back. Um, personally, I think if you don't have the motivation, don't push it, um, because if you've not got the motivation, you're not you're not going to do a good job. Um, this is one of the reasons why, as I stand right now, I'll probably never do commission painting and by commission painting I mean being paid cash um, if a war game club came up to me and said oh we need these models paint can you do a set for me yeah no problems I'll say to them give us give us a fiver to cover me paint and stuff um, and I'll, I'll get them done for you no problems and but they probably won't be as a higher standard as my own models are because I won't have that motivation or oh, I've got to push myself so but saying that sometimes you get to a point where excuse me I'm sorry I've got hiccups <coughs> you get to the point where each day that you don't paint it gets a little bit harder to get back into it so you may take a day's break and then you go into it the next day that's fine um, but you get to the point where you're just not painting because you don't want to. Um, and then you the next day you've got slightly more excuse to not get back. And the next thing you know you've not painted for months. And then it's it's almost impossible to get back in. Um, I, I find myself Wednesdays and Thursdays are my busy days. Um, because I work. Um, so I don't get a lot of time to paint and yet they're the days when I seem to be more motivated. Um, today's Saturday, I'm not doing an awful lot. Um, I've done a bit of painting today, um, but I'm not motivated to go all day, so I've stopped. Um, so yeah, you need that motivation. Um, so you've got to have attitude and you've got to have the mood. Um, and the next thing is you've got to have a bit of imagination. Um, as I say, I do love doing the aircraft painting, but one of the, one of the cons of, of, of aircraft painting is, um, if you're like me, you, you've got to get it right, or you might as well not bother at all. Now, with aircraft painting, you can't go half a shade lighter or half a shade darker, because it's the wrong colour. It is very, very exact. Um... This is this is the shade for a US aircraft, uh, newer post 64 aircraft. Um, if you go a couple of shades lighter, you're actually then you're in a shade that's a completely different era. Um, so it's wrong. Now with uh, this. At first, I thought this, this skin was too light, um, but it's fine because it might be right. The the loincloth is actually too dark red, um, but it's fine um, because I've been slightly limited by money. Um, I needed Mephiston Mep Mep red, I think it's called, and I couldn't afford to buy that and buy corn red that I needed for my blood thirster. So I bought the corn red and I painted with that. Now using my imagination, um a rat ogre is supplied with a loincloth that is he's not going down to Savile Row Tailors and going, well I need this exact shade. Um what he's actually doing is he's picking up a piece of cloth and wrapping it around him. So in actual fact, the fact that the both of these ogres have the same colour loincloth is probably wrong. 
unless they both came from the same piece of cloth. Um, so this is what I mean by imagination. Um, my high elves to start with, because this is my first block of, of units, I'm painting them, the main colours are going to be blue. Um, but I've already anticipated that if I did them all blue and white, they're going to be boring. Same colours each time, each time I paint the high elves. So I've already done the research into using different colours. Um, so I can do regional armies. So anyone that comes from the north of the country might have red. Uh, and then what kind of reds do I need? Um, so I'm imagining that um, great example, if you look at Game of Thrones, when they have a battle, the, the whole army is made up of different units that come from different parts of the country. Um, and the army is actually very very small but it's bulked out by allies and allies being uh, I'm probably going more into empire here um, you've probably got a block of the king's guard and then you've got house of such and such who sides with him and then you've got another house and then you might have the allies of that one you know um, what's it saying an ally of my ally is my ally or was it the opposite of my enemy's enemy is my friend or something like that anyway so basically you don't actually have an army as such what you have is little blocks of armies that have all joined into one force um, that's best represented by the fact that you have core units rare units special units and then within the core you have so you'll have um, reavers you'll have spearmen archers they may well actually be uh, you might have gathered your archers from the north and then from the east you've got your spearmen so they might all be although each unit will be immaculately the same that unit might be sitting next to another unit that can be from a different area and they'll probably be so this is where your imagination comes in so <coughs> i've given you three things that i think you need for modeling and we haven't even picked up the model yet so there are three obvious things left that you need to be able to paint um, one is a model you need something to model otherwise all you're doing is you're just waving paint into thin air the next thing you need is paint and do you know what I picked one at random and I've picked a shade so it's not even a paint is it so we have a paint and then we need something to get that paint onto there and a little bit better method than pouring it all on is to use a brush and there we have a brush and physically that's all you need to paint a few of these a couple of these and one of these and you see I'm using my little space here and this is all the space I need to paint oh my brush hasn't been cleaned properly it's gone all hard I'm gonna to have to invest in some brush cleaner um, so yeah there you go that's that's my introduction and my basically basic guide to painting um, I hope you've enjoyed this um, it's extremely long uh, 50 minutes I think that's long for an introduction video um, so I do apologize um, watch out for more videos that I do uh, post in the comments below um, constructive comments are always nice they don't always have to be positive um, but I ask that they're constructive that's all I ask um, maybe I should go away and do something else in your opinion um, maybe I'm not as good a painter as I think I am actually I think I'm, I'm a, I think I'm a better painter than I think I am no that didn't make sense but that's fine um, leave a comment subscribe make suggestions for things that you think I should do um, 
I'm actually, as I do videos, I'm actually going to do instructional videos when I do a new technique so that in future videos I can say, right, what we do is we prime it and if you don't know how to prime, look out for one of my videos that I've already made on priming and blah, 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 blah. And what we'll do is we'll dry brush and if you don't know how to dry brush, um, otherwise I'm going to have to keep stopping all the time and going, right, you need to... If, if every video that I made said, right, okay, prime it, and this is how you do it, blah, 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 it's going to make a five-minute video into a two-hour video. So if there's anything you think I need to cover first, put them in the comments below. If you like my